In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. I always wonder why they say snakes cannot be trusted. You ever seen snake skin under a microscope? Yes, this is really snake skin under a microscope, but the story go way deeper. You ever ask yourself this question? Why do snakes shed their skin? I have a better question. You ever ask yourself why do we shed our skin? When snakes shed their skin, they are removing parasites and any kind of germ that's attached to their body. When we shed our skin, we are getting rid of infections and parasites that might be on our skin. I don't know, that story kind of sounds similar. Ancient spiritual teachers really believe that this entire planet we live on is just a dragon. And we are the bacteria that's on the skin of the dragon. Every time the dragon shed its skin, it's bringing in more life. And it's getting rid of old life. This go back to the story of Tiamat. Tiamat is actually the serpent goddess. It's been so many ancient stories speaking about Tiamat, the goddess or the dragon that came here from the waters above. Please research Tiamat. This story is actually mind blowing. Spiritual cult teachers really believe that there is worlds on top of worlds and all these worlds is filled with water. They believe Tiamat came from the water world on top of this world. If you pay attention to all the cultures back in the day, they always worship the serpent, the dragon or the snake. They call them the Naga serpents. Why would so many people around the world worship the Naga serpents that never met each other before? Unless they was getting their teachings from the same entities. When I was young, I used to always watch Dragon Ball Z just for the superpowers and the fightings. But now that I'm older and I watch it, I'll be like, shit, it's a lot of knowledge in this cartoon. They was going around trying to get the seven Dragon Balls. And once you get the seven Dragon Balls, you can make a wish and a dragon will appear. Remember, they are trying to get seven Dragon Balls to activate the dragon. When it comes to spiritual teachings, we must activate the seven chakras in our body so we can get in contact with the kundalini the seven chakras is the seven dragon balls and the kundalini is the dragon it was trying to tell us in these cartoons since we was children once you activate your seven chakras you can contact the great mother or the kundalini and then you can make your wish within so if we have a snake that's always shedding his skin to be a different person we must be shed our skin to be a different person. Wow, I actually took a couple of things from this video. One, I never heard about the world being a snake and the snake shedding its skin. That was a new one to me. And the second thing is the Dragon Ball reference. That was actually a really clever reference I never would have guessed if no one would have brought that up. The seven Dragon Balls probably do represent the seven chakras. That was pretty neat. And I really do like the theory that if we are within a firmament, that there's other worlds outside of our firmament, rather they be water or just different planes of existence in general. I do like the idea that there are other planes of existence beyond our own. Call them different dimensions, if you will. And that's a fair point. There was a lot of people that depicted dragons and snake people and lizard people back in the day. Who's to say they did not come from that other dimension and they're just no longer needed now, so they went back to their dimension or someone from an even higher dimension pulled them back because they were not supposed to be here all really interesting i really like this video leave a comment on your thoughts about it an extreme and deadly heat dome is heading towards america right now which is forcing thousands of people to evacuate their homes and it already caused huge wildfires in california but wasn't it just terrible weather in tornadoes last week especially in texas and now we got to deal with this extreme heat nah bro something ain't right the temperatures are supposed to be over 110 degrees so these are all the places that's going to be affected the most and feel free to take a screenshot this is going to stretch from florida all the way to vegas and it's supposed to be here in five days so here are some ways you can start preparing for it for number one get you a fan before they sell out if it's 120 degrees outside you might need an extra breeze for number two stock up on water go ahead and get this now so you don't got to worry about it when it's burning outside and for number three stay in the crib this heat dome already killed almost 50 people from dehydration and heat stroke so it's nothing to play with be sure to share this video and hit follow so you miss any more updates love y'all please be careful out there with these extreme temperatures going on it is extremely dangerous if you have an ac unit get it inspected because you definitely do not want your ac unit going out during such high temperatures and also keep an eye on your animals we don't want to leave them out of the situation either here's the door Look at that. That's cold water. And these walls glitter. And they glitter even more the further you go. There's nobody up here filling it. Nobody doing nothing. Spring fed it. And it's full. It goes way back there. So, as a kid, I've walked this all the way back to the very end. 
it was deep enough for water and not for. Yeah, it's pretty neat, huh? Yeah, it goes. Looks like it got deeper, but. Yep. So, I'm gonna have to do a video one day for you guys and. Uh, Close it a little bit. Until they had it. Yeah, I got it. If this volcano erupts, we are all screwed. This right here is the Super Caldera Volcano located in Yellowstone National Park. I'm sure you know about volcanoes all across the world. Of course, they're pretty dangerous, right, when you look at things like Pompeii, but you haven't seen a super volcano. So a super volcano is like a hundred times worse than a normal volcano, hence the name super. There's only a few super volcanoes around the world, including the Lake Toba super volcano, which is just nuts, I'll cover that separately, and the Yellowstone Super Caldera. So a normal volcano may be extremely deadly for anybody who's in the close vicinity. There's going to be some area around it with the ash and that's not going to be good, but a lot of people in other places are going to be fine. With a super volcano, if this erupted in Yellowstone National Park, the whole of the USA would feel this and the whole of the world would as well. Look at the impact it would have just across the states. And the ash cloud could be so thick that it could actually block out the sun for up to 10 years, meaning crops couldn't even be grown anywhere on earth. No thanks, I'm done. This is where it gets scarier. This volcano is actually overdue an eruption of about a thousand years, so it literally could erupt at any minute. Brilliant, that's great. But NASA have some new plans to basically stop this and are saying this is the only way they can prevent disaster. They said the only way to stop this is by cooling it down. Like, what are you going to do? Throw some ice in it, mate? That's not going to flipping work. But not just cool it down. They want to turn this volcano into a giant heat and power source. It would be like the most powerful in the world. They are saying that if they were able to extract the heat from this volcano and filter it into other areas, it would basically lower the rate of this thing erupting by like 35%. There's still a chance it can still erupt and cream everyone, but a bit safer. So their plans are basically to try and stop this thing before it erupts, turn it into a giant heat and power source, like... Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know what to make of this. As always, hit that follow button. I'll keep you updated. When you think of Yellowstone, you kind of think of Old Faithful. But in the future, when you think of Yellowstone, you could potentially be thinking of one of the largest power facilities in the world. That's kind of crazy. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you so much for being subscribed and thank you so much for watching. You see these pictures of the Earth and sometimes you'll see like Google Earth's o ocean features and you think the seafloor is all mapped, and, and the fact is it's not. We've not even mapped 25% of the world seafloor to a, a modern standard, meaning multi-beam sonar and GPS uh, navigation. 75% of the uh, Earth's seafloor is basically uncharted territory, and, and it's even crazier for the volume of the ocean. Barely 5% of the ocean volume has ever been explored with a remotely operated vehicle. 5%. 5%, yeah. So like that much volume, we don't even know what's out there. So there's another thing about this underwater feature off SoCal that I want to dive an ROV on. I happen to know this very famous explorer. His name is Victor Vescovo. He learned that all the deep ocean trenches in the world, not all of them have been explored. So he bought a ship, built his own submersible, and financed uh, for the sum of about $50 million dollars an expedition to dive in all the five deep trenches. I can't wait for the day for us to actually be able to fully explore the ocean, if that day ever comes. Not to mention all the civilizations that were lost in time because of the ocean. It's a really fascinating topic for me. I always love watching ocean exploration. Weird creature found in forest. Check it out. I mean, that's obviously either a statue or someone in some kind of costume. Craziest conspiracy theories on the entire Earth that you will seriously not believe. As I'm sure you know, this shows a list of the scariest theories from the most well-known to the darkest. We're going from the top to the bottom, no faffing about, let's go. This is a trippy one. This is seriously gonna trip you out. There are millions of you that exist on this Earth. Now make sure you share with a friend and if you're easily scared, just keep on scrolling right now. So, parallel universes to start with. This is a huge theory that I'm sure you've heard about, right? You've got films such as Spider-Man No Way Home, which are kind of related to this. It's basically an alternate universe where things are kind of similar to ours, but play out slightly differently. 
for instance, an easy way to show it is, you know, this is red, but could be green in another universe or pink in another one. Or you might go on this boat here and be fine. In another one, it might sink. In another one, it might blow up. Things are the same. They just play out slightly differently. Now, the main theory suggests that there are millions of parallel universes similar to ours, but with different versions of you, different versions of your friends, where situations you're in play out slightly different in each one of them. It sounds crazy, but there is no way to disprove this. And we know that the universe is infinite. So many scientists do genuinely believe this and say, there's no way to disprove it. It could be real. Now we're going down the loophole. This is where it gets crazier again. So stick with me. So you've probably heard of the Mandela effect, right? Like many people remember this robber emoji, but it never existed. Curious George never had a tail. Tinkerbell never dot in the eye in Disney films. I mean, the list goes on. So the theory suggests that we have swapped into a different parallel universe at some point in the last 10 years, or we are constantly swapping between universes and we just can't even tell it. And that would explain why we get these Mandela effects where things are just slightly off and slightly different, right? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on this. It's crazy, but there you go. Make sure you hit that follow button. The series is going to get far crazier. And I'll see you guys in the next one. You know, this got me thinking of a couple of things. One, I'll start with the Mandela effect. What if there's an alternate reality out there where they did not have a cornucopia behind the Fruit of the Loom logo? And then they got transferred over to the reality that had the cornucopia behind the Fruit of the Loom logo. And we are in their reality where there is no cornucopia behind the logo. That would be kind of crazy. So in some other reality, the cornucopia is behind the Fruit of the Loom logo. And there's just a bunch of people like, there wasn't a cornucopia behind the Fruit of the Loom logo. What's going on? That's kind of funny. And the other thing is, is the multi verse theory. It's an awesome theory. I really like it, but I kind of do not believe it. Mainly because if there's an unlimited amount of multiverses, then that would mean in one of the multiverse, or even in many, that I would be a scientist that would figure out how to travel through the multiverse and get into contact with me talking to you right now. There should be a multiverse where I figured out the key to traveling the multiverse and I come through that door any minute now saying, I figured it out and I can explain it all. But it didn't happen. And that theory to me makes me believe that the multiverse theory does not exist because that could apply to anybody throughout the multiverse, not just me trying to get in contact with me. There could be other people trying to get in contact with me. If the multiverse is unlimited, then the chances of that happening are extremely high and probably multiple times over and over and over again. And I'm 100% sure now that I've explained my view of it, someone can correct me or maybe lay out an understanding to how my view is not a correct way of looking at it. So if you want to leave a comment below letting me know how the multiverse works in regards to how I think it works, please let me know because I am interested but that theory that I come up with always kind of makes me think, eh, I should be able to travel through the multiverse if there's an unlimited multiverse as one of me should have been able to master that ability, right? Do you want to know the one biggest thing that woke me up out of the matrix? You're looking at it. This is the star Sirius, and this is what it actually looks like through thousands upon thousands upon thousands of amateurs instead of that one government organization with the four letters. Now I can't explain how I came upon this other than the fact that I swear to you, I think God tapped me on the shoulder and said, Tyler, you need to study the stars. And boy, what I found sure woke me up. But what woke me up wasn't just the fact that I found out that stars weren't what I always thought they were for 42 years. No, it's what I found in the stars. And when I slow these down and I give you still images, some of you are going to see it. Some of you who are enlightened and have some spirituality already will be able to see it. Others of you won't. But there are dogs in these stars. Every little flicker of light is a different dog. And I'm going to show you. And like I said, I don't think all of you are going to be able to see it. And sometimes I hesitate to show this because I don't want to lose credibility. But credibility isn't what I'm going for. I'm going for truth and spreading it and waking people up to where we actually are and who created where we actually are. Now I'm going to go through some of these still shots and point them out, but I don't want you to just believe me. I want you to go experiment and find these on your own because for all you know, I could have created these dog faces like this nose and two eyes and this nose and two eyes and this a little bit elongated forehead, but nose and two eyes. 
and cockeyed face, but nose and two eyes and even a tongue and cute little face. And again, nose and two eyes. And this one to me looks like it's licking its nose. Pretty clear lab face to me. And again, and a little chihuahua looking guy. And kind of a little one there. In this one, I tried to do a side-by-side -side with the nose and two eyes. Looks pretty similar to that one. And again, here's two dog faces. One here with a nose, another one with a nose. Obviously, this is a real photo, but I tried to match it up. Now, I want to be fully transparent with you guys. I don't have an answer for you of what these are and what this means. The only thing I know 100% is that stars aren't what we were all told. They're not burning balls of gas trillions and quintillions of miles away. They're either some sort of spiritual entity up there or power source or holding cell for souls, or they're a deception because we're living in Satan short season or any one of infinite possibilities in between. I don't know. But what I do need you to know is they're not what we're told. That's the most important part. And go study this yourself. Don't just believe me. It's been a while since I've watched a fittest flat earth video. His videos don't come up in my feed as much, but I do enjoy one of his videos every once in a while. They they crack me up. <laughs> There's a comment on this video that says he's doing yoga with the way he's stretching. I do see the dog faces in some of those images that he's talking about. I truly believe that he's pulling these images from the true source that he's saying he's not making these images up. I just think that he's trying a little too hard to see those dog faces in some of those images. Some of them, yes, but most of those were like, come on now, really? I know a lot of people probably skip past his video as soon as his head popped up, but that's okay. I enjoy some of his content, and to be fair, a lot of people probably skip past me talking, so... But let me know in the comments of what you think about his theory of the stars not being real stars and the images that were provided are being fed to us with lies. And did you see any dog faces in those star images? I wouldn't say that that's a humanoid cryptid. I would just say that that's a person crawling around in someone's yard and realized that they got busted and just ran. So the blue orb you're going to see is absolutely a protector spirit and watch its movement. I mean, I only seen it for a second, so I can't be too certain. And unfortunately, at the end of this one, it was really brief. So I can't say if that was a real orb or not, but I do enjoy good orb videos. They're just really hard to find. A woman is woken up late at night by her dog, who is barking nonstop at something outside her house. Feeling very unsettled by her dog's behavior, she takes out her phone and records the following video. What she sees leaves her in total shock. Although it's hard to see at first, there seems to be a shadow-like figure standing completely still while seemingly observing the woman who shakes in fear at the sight of this mysterious being. Immensely terrified, the woman backs away slowly, hoping the shadowy figure doesn't move any closer to the property. It's safe to say that the strange presence has placed both her and her dog on high alert, but it would be the following night that places them in a state of complete terror. What happens next is beyond strange. Hola, gente. Otra vez el ruido ese. 
Foco está haciendo una compañía hoy, pero ya estoy sola. Todavía se escucha un río de abajo. Y la verdad que no sé. Ay, la con, con olor a árbol. Sora. Sora, subí. Ay, no, me siento. Nera. Horrified beyond belief, a pair of long, skinny fingers emerge from underneath the staircase. But creepiest of all is the complexion of this mysterious being. Its pale skin tone is similar to that of a corpse that was freshly buried. Without delay, the woman runs down the staircase at full speed, hoping to capture whatever this was. But, upon arriving down, nothing is seen below the stairs. Whatever had been there had seemingly disappeared. Whether a ghost or some paranormal entity had been caught on camera remains shrouded in mystery. I'm still not 100% convinced that this is a real video. It does seem very authentic. I would just think that someone was down all the way at the bottom of the stairs just putting their hands under through it because she never did show all of underneath the stairs. So I'd still think someone's just hiding down there, whether they're pranking me or not. But nonetheless, if something like this happened to me and I got on a video, I don't know if I'd be able to sleep at night. There's this doctor going around telling people they had cancer even though they didn't. Never heard of that. Fam, so there's this doctor that went out and literally told every single one of his patients Damn. that they had cancer just so he can get money from it. Damn. So his whole plan was like, I'm not making enough money as a doctor already. I'm going to go to their insurance companies, give them the slip. Oh, I need to do treatment on this thing because they have cancer. Oh. So he got paid by the insurance companies. But he did this, I think it was for six years. So a bunch of patients out there yeah. thought they had cancer and went through chemo. Oh, that's f Oh, imagine that's messed up. Yeah, a healthy person has nothing wrong with them going into chemo. That's gonna f them up already. Damn, that's yeah. sad. The only time that he got caught because one of the patients that he put under chemo got injured. And they, he went to a different doctor. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So they cracked the knee. The doctor that was supposed to operate yeah. was on vacation because he had oh. hella riches. The other doctor says, yo, why were you in chemo anyways? You have nothing wrong with you. Damn. They were like, what? Fam, he went to the CEO of the hospital. I'm yeah. quitting. You guys have some such going on. Boom, there's more investigation. $34 million he made. Honestly, I think this happens a lot more than one would think, not just with cancer, but different kind of illnesses in general. Maybe not to the point where they're lying about cancer, but they could be lying about all other different types of treatments that you do not need that they're prescribing you. And it's just hard not going to the hospital if your kid's sick or if your spouse is sick or if you even feel really bad. Sometimes you do feel like you need to go to the hospital. Let me know what you guys think about this. Do you trust your doctor or do you even go to the doctors? Heard about this before? <laughs> I didn't know there was another planet out there. Listen, when they flew by it a few years ago, the lights were on. They sent the probe out there. What? The, the lights, lights were on. on. And so they start, tried to say it was ice particles glistening in the sunlight. So when they got to the dark side, guess what? The lights were on on the dark side. So they couldn't use the ice particle explanation anymore. So they just said, we don't know what it is. What? Ceres' small size means that even at its brightest, it's too dim to be seen by the naked eye, except under extremely dark skies. Do we actually live on the inside of the planet? where the sun is a giant battery-operated contraption and the stars are just refractions of its light. According to the theories of Cyrus Reed Teed, we live in a concave or cellular hollow earth. Teed believed the sky, humanity, and the surface of the earth exist on the inside of a universe-encompassing sphere. Teed was a U.S. eclectic physician and alchemist turned cult leader and self-proclaimed messiah. In 1869, during an experiment, he was severely shocked and passed out. While unconscious, he believed he was visited by a divine spirit who told him he was the Messiah, a reincarnation of Jesus Christ. Teed would then take on the name Koresh, where he would go on to establish Koreshanity. Koreshanity preached cellular cosmogony, alchemy, reincarnation, immortality, celibacy, communism, and a number of bizarre ideas. In 1894, Teed's followers began to establish themselves in a small Florida town called Estro, where Teed planned to build a new Jerusalem. They had over 250 residents covering about 110 square miles, making it the fifth largest area of any city in the U.S. at the time. On October 13, 1906, Teed tried to break up a fight involving a group of Khorashans. 
and was severely beaten by a Marshal Sanchez. He died on December 22nd, 1908. I do also really like Hollow Earth theory. I do not know if I necessarily believe the fact that we are living in the Hollow Earth and the sky and everything that we see above us is just the crust of the inner Earth. I'm not denying that there might be a hollow earth. I just think that the system inside the hollow earth would be a little bit more different than seeing outer space like how we see it. I could be completely wrong, though. Until the day we find out, we'll never know. So the Atlantis one. So yeah, the Rishat structure. When you look. So the Atlantis one. So yeah, the Rishat structure. Atlantis has always been the big one. That has been the one that everybody talked about was this incredibly advanced civilization. Mm -hmm. And no one can figure out where it is here. Okay, so what you're looking at is approximately 250 miles inland in the total barren desert of Mauritania. The circles themselves is about 14 and a half miles across. However, if you go the complete shebang, the whole circle itself is just shy of 30 miles. Atlantis was said to be made up of 10 kingdoms. And then there was the lost city of Atlantis, which was the capital which was said to be made up of concentric circles, two of water, three of land, and essentially that they were obliterated by a cataclysm. But what people, most people don't realize is that Solon had traveled to Egypt, and so it's the ancient Egyptians is where that tale comes from. Mm. The way it was described is that it was a city that was said to be busy all day, all night, rich in trade, with languages spoken from all over. And if it really was a place that was really popular where there was a lot of people gathering around to do different trades and stuff, that's pretty neat too. And you would think that there would be a lot of things that came from Atlantis that are around the world through the act of trading. So there's probably some old relics floating around all over the world that we have no clue about that actually came from Atlantis. Whether it's super advanced technology or not, maybe not. It could just be a little tiny sculpture carved from rock for all we know, but it could have came from Atlantis. And that's kind of a cool idea. When you look at these ancient languages like cuneiform, mm -hmm. uh, can you read that? Do you know how to read it? Yeah, a, a small amount of it, yeah. So basically you take a uh, you take a stick. It looks like a stick with a with a kind of a... Uh, a curved end, right? Almost sharpened. It's called a, a, a stylus. And then oh, you. It's like a stylus for an iPad. Exactly. Very similar, okay. right? And then you take a piece of wet clay, and right before it's too wet or too dry, right in the middle stage, you then start wedging, uh, making these incredible lines into the clay. And then from that, you get this cuneiform text. So this text literally, uh, you know, some of them, some of the letters actually relate to complete ideas. Uh, but it's incredible work and it takes a long time to do. And then you have to let this thing dry and then it becomes stone. So, uh, you know, what, if people were supposed to be trying to worry about, uh, how to, how they're going to get their next meal, uh, shelter for the night and all these kind of things, who has time to sit down and write these incredible works of art, like the Epic of Gilgamesh, for example? Yeah. So I think they really were writing down and also they were transcribing information that was given to them by these quote unquote gods with the lowercase g. Man, if he can really read some of that, that's impressive. And the simple fact that there is people out there that can actually read that stuff blows my mind. It would be cool for him to sit down with a tablet with someone that can professionally read it throughout and go over everything. That would be a really neat sit down to just see someone decipher what these tablets say and how to read them or just read over them in general like it was a book. I would sit and listen. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.